Spotlight 7 by Virginia Evans, Jenny Dooley, Olga Podoliako, Julia Vaulina. Module 1. Lifestyles. One A. A city mouse or a country mouse? Exercise one A, page six. Exercise 2, page 6. Teenage Life Swap Annabelle and Sarah are guests on a reality TV show. Annabelle lives in London. Sarah lives on a farm in the north of Scotland. They are swapping families and schools for a week. Annabelle, 14. Day 2 Everyone gets up at 5am because there's a lot to do on the farm. Sarah's mum is very nice. She brings me a cup of tea in bed, but I just go back to sleep. Later, I go outside to the farmyard to help Sarah's family. Today, we are milking the cows in the barn and feeding the chickens. The animals are lovely, but I can't stand the smell. Day 4 Sarah's mum takes me to school every morning. We drive five miles to meet the school bus, which leaves at 7 a.m. Sarah's school is very small, but everyone's so friendly. Day 6 Learning about farming is interesting, but I'm happy I'm going home tomorrow. The fresh air is nice, but it's too quiet here. I also feel isolated. In the city, the streets are crowded, but you have everything close at hand. I miss the hustle and bustle of London, but I don't want to leave all my new friends. Sarah, 14. Day 2 Everyone stays in bed late here. It's 8am and Annabelle's mum is making breakfast. In the afternoon, we're going shopping on Oxford Street. And then we're going to the cinema. I'm so excited. Day 4 I travel to Annabelle's school by tube. Her school is huge, with 1,500 students. And her friends are very interesting and helpful. I'm enjoying the lessons, but most of all, I love the facilities. 
The computer room and the swimming pool are my favourites. Day six. Today, I'm feeling a bit tired. It's always noisy here, and you can hear the traffic all night. I think I'm getting a bit homesick too. I miss the beautiful landscapes and the people from my hometown. I'm happy I'm going home tomorrow, but I'm sure I'll visit London and see Annabelle's lovely family again. One B. Better safe than sorry. Exercise two A, page eight. Hi, Joe. What's your dad doing? He's installing an alarm system. What for? Well, there are burglars around here. They're stealing things from people's houses. Really? Yes. You should tell your parents. You're right. They should probably install an alarm too. And you should be careful with your keys. Don't lose them or leave them near an open window. I didn't think of that. You know. There's a lot of crime in cities these days. I think you're right. We should be careful. Yeah, better safe than sorry. Exercise six, page nine. And now to a message from the police to our listeners. The police say that crime is increasing in the area, and we should be careful. If you are out at night time, you should walk in a well lit area. They also say that you should always have your mobile phone with you and call for help if you have a problem. Always keep your money close to you, and don't carry a lot of cash unless you really have to. If you have a car, don't leave expensive items and bags for all to see. They are also asking people to join the local neighbourhood watch to help stop crime. And if you don't have one already, you should get a burglar alarm for your home. One C. Hanging out. Exercise two B, page ten. Kelly and Jamie tell us about their coolest spots in Sydney. My coolest spot is Darling Harbour. There are plenty of activities to choose from, such as a ride on the carousel, a film at the IMAX theatre, an exhibition at the Powerhouse Museum, or a visit to the fantasy world of Jacob's Toy Maker. Kelly. Manly has lots of interesting attractions, including Ocean World. And the popular surfing beach, but I'm crazy about one thing: Manly Skate Park. I love it there. I meet my friends and we skate all afternoon. Manly is also the best place to shop for skating gear. Jamie. One D, culture corner, exercise two A, page eleven. Landmarks of the British Isles. Malahide Castle is northeast of Dublin city, Ireland, and dates back to the twelfth century. It is in the middle of a large park and was used as both a fortress and a family home. It is a spooky place because people often see ghosts there. Edinburgh Castle is Scotland's most famous castle. 
It is very popular with tourists and around one million people visit it every year. It is a very unique castle as it was built on top of an extinct volcano. Conwy Castle in Gwynedd, Wales is a classical 13th century fortress. It is a masterpiece of medieval architecture that took seven years to build. It has eight big towers that offer great views of the nearby river and the Snowdonian Mountains. The Tower of London sits on the banks of the River Thames. The tower is guarded by yeoman warders, or beefeaters. Eight big black birds called ravens live in the tower. There's a legend that says if they ever fly away, the tower will fall down. English in Use 1 Exercise 2A Page 12 Next, please. Where to? Single or return? Return to Barbican, please. That's six pounds. Which line do I take, please? You're welcome. Exercise 2B, page 12. A. Next, please. Two tickets, please. Where to? St. James's Park. Single or return? Single, please. That's six pounds. B. Yes, please. Two tickets return to Barbican, please. That's twelve pounds. Here you are. Which line do I take, please? Take the circle line. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Exercise 4, page 12. Reading rules. E A double E E Steal Seek I I Nick Pete Pit Peel Pill Beat Bit Slip Sleep Extensive Reading 1 Across the Curriculum Geography Exercise 1 Page 13 Exercise 2B, page 13. Mexico City. Capital city of Mexico. Continent, North America. Population, 20 million. Language, Spanish. Currency, Peso. Tourism. Mexico City is one of the world's largest cities. It has got beautiful old buildings, green parks, museums, and an exciting nightlife. It's a great place to visit. Nine million people visit it each year. Homes Many people live in beautiful houses with gardens. Others live in blocks of flats near the city center. Transport. Mexico City is a difficult city to drive in because of the heavy traffic. The city's fantastic metro network, however, has 11 lines and is very cheap. There are hundreds of buses, trolley buses, and peseros, minibuses, too. Leisure. 
In their free time, Mexicans shop at colourful street markets. They also enjoy going to the cinema and theatre. They even have street parties. Football and horse racing are the most popular sports. Food. The people of Mexico City are very friendly. The food is excellent too. The restaurants serve delicious local food like tortillas and frijoles, beans. Module two, tail time. Two A, bookworms. Exercise two B, page sixteen. Excitement, adventure, and mystery. All make up the world of fiction, and here are some of the greatest names in fiction. Who was the queen of crime? Agatha Christie, of course, the world's best-known mystery writer. Agatha Christie was born in Devon, England, in 1890, and she created many fictional detectives. The most famous are Hercule Poirot and Miss Marple. Hercule Poirot is a Belgian detective. Famous for his neat appearance, his obsession with order, and his use of psychology in his investigations of crimes. Miss Marple, on the other hand, is nothing like a typical detective. At first glance, she is an ordinary old lady who loves knitting and gossip, but she can solve the hardest of mysteries and puts many criminals behind bars. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle was born in Edinburgh, Scotland, in 1859. He studied medicine at the University of Edinburgh. It was one of his professors that inspired him to create the most brilliant detective ever, Sherlock Holmes. Holmes's extraordinary powers of observation help him solve the most mysterious cases with the help of his faithful companion, Doctor Watson. Holmes is very logical and extremely intelligent. He wears a cape and hat, smokes a pipe, and uses a magnifying glass. Jules Verne lived in Nantes, on the west coast of France. He loved the sea, and when he was only twelve, he tried to run away on a ship to the West Indies. Unfortunately for him, the sailors caught him and sent him home. Jules had a great imagination and wrote several adventure stories and created mysterious characters like Captain Nemo. In Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea, Captain Nemo travels under the sea in his submarine, the Nautilus. On his journeys, he meets strange sea creatures and finds an underwater city. Two B. A classic read. Exercise one. Page eighteen. Exercise two B, page eighteen. Journey to the center of the Earth by Jules Verne is an adventure story about a professor, Otto Leidenbrock, and his nephew Axel. After they find a mysterious message from explorer Arne Saknussem in an old book. They go on a dangerous journey to look for the center of the Earth.
During their adventure, their raft is broken against rocks, and they discover an amazing place. While Hans repairs the raft, Axel and the professor look around. Let's explore this area over here. What's that noise? Quick, hide! The men hide behind some bushes. Look, a man and huge elephants. But they used to live thousands of years ago. When we get home, people will be amazed by what we saw. But will they believe us? We must get back to Hans and the raft. Wait, what's this? It's a very old knife. It must be Arne Saknusem's. The professor finds initials on a cave wall. Saknusem was here. The compass must be broken. We found it. This must be the last part of Arne Saknusem's journey. Quick, let's find Hans and come back. To see, vanished. Exercise one a, page twenty. One. Two. <sighs> Four. Five, <gasps> six, seven. <laughs> Eight. <sighs> Nine. <laughs> 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 Ten. <laughs> Exercise one C, page twenty. One Saturday last winter, my best friends Amy, Maria, Greg, Andy, and I decided to spend the weekend in my uncle's big old house in the country. It was stormy outside, so we decided to spend a cosy evening chatting together in the living room downstairs. Suddenly, there was a powerful gust of wind. The lights flickered and then went out altogether. What was that? I said. Don't worry, John. It's just a power cut. Greg reassured me. We carried on laughing and telling scary stories in the dark. After a while, there was a bright flash of lightning that lit up the whole room. There was a loud gasp. <gasps> Andy is missing. Amy cried. We all looked at each other, confused and scared, because no one had seen Andy leave the room. 
We felt our way around the house, calling Andy, but there was no reply. We went back to the living room and tried to think of what to do next. Just then, there was a loud snore from the corner of the room. At that moment, the lights came back on. There was Andy, fast asleep on a big velvet sofa. Andy sat up sleepily, rubbing his eyes. Oh, good! The lights are back on, he said. I was sleepy and felt like a snooze. I didn't want anyone's trip over me, so I crawled over here. We were all very relieved. <sighs> 2D Culture Corner Exercise 1, page 21 Exercise 2A, page 21. The Gift of Storytelling A story should be told eye to eye, mind to mind, heart to heart. Stanley Robertson, Storyteller Perhaps the best way to spend a cold winter night in Ireland is to sit in front of the fire and enjoy the company of a shanky, a storyteller. Ireland has many stories to tell, and they belong to two groups, myths and legends and folk tales. Throughout the years, people passed on stories to form a great tradition. Myths and legends are stories about giants, saints, warriors and kings. They are tales of heroes who overcome great obstacles, fight with magical beasts and have incredible adventures. One such legend is the story of the noble champion Finn McCool and his group of warriors, the Fianna, who protected the high kings of Ireland. Folk tales entertain people while teaching them moral values. These stories have the most unusual characters – fairies, elves, leprechauns and many more. The leprechaun is one of the most popular characters in Irish folklore. Its name means small body. It is a type of fairy that makes shoes and has a hidden treasure. A crock filled with gold. If you catch it, it must tell you the secret location of its treasure immediately. But be careful. It will try to trick you into looking away for a second and then it will disappear. English in Use 2 Exercise 1A, page 22. You'll never guess what happened to me. What is it? You look a little upset. I had quite a shock. What on earth was it? Oh, my goodness! What was going on? Oh, dear! Exercise 1B, page 22 Hi, Penny. Hi, John. You'll never guess what happened to me. What is it? You look a little upset. Oh dear, I had quite a shock. Really? Why? I was at the zoo when I heard people shouting and screaming. What on earth was it? Everyone was around the fountain and they all looked really scared. Oh my goodness! What was going on? Did someone fall in the water? Not someone, but something. There was a long orange snake with black stripes swimming around in it. Oh dear! Was anyone hurt? No, 
The guards caught it quickly and put it back in its cage. Well, well, well. You don't see that every day, do you? No, you certainly don't. Exercise four, page twenty-two. Reading rules. E, double E, E A, E, me, C, bead, E R E, double E R, E A R, ear, hear, beer, beard. Me, mere, be, beer, knee, near. Extensive reading two, across the curriculum, literature, exercise two a, page twenty three. Exercise two B, page twenty three. Oscar Wilde, the Canterville Ghost. When Mister Hiram B. Otis, the American ambassador, bought Canterville Chase, everyone told him it was a very foolish thing to do, as the place was haunted. At eleven o'clock, the family went to bed, and by half past, all the lights were out. Some time after, Mister Otis woke up because of a noise outside his room. It sounded like the clank of metal. He got up at once, struck a match, and looked at the time. It was exactly one o'clock. Mister Otis was quite calm. The strange noise continued, and with it he heard the sound of footsteps. He put on his slippers, took a small bottle out of his dressing case, and opened the door. Right in front of him, he saw an old man. He looked terrible. His eyes were red, his hair was long and grey, his clothes were old-fashioned and dirty. And there were handcuffs and rusty chains on his wrists and ankles. My dear sir," said Mister Otis, "those chains need oiling. Here, take the small bottle of lubricant. I will leave it here for you, and I will give you more if you need it." With these words, the ambassador put the bottle down on a marble table and went back to bed, closing the door behind him. Exercise six, page twenty-three. For a moment, the Canterville ghost stood quietly in the hall. Then he threw the bottle of lubricant upon the floor and he ran down the corridor. Just as he reached the top of the great wooden stairs, a door opened. And two little white-robed figures appeared, and a large pillow flew past his head. There was no time to be lost, so he vanished through the wall, and the house became quiet again. On reaching a small secret room, he leaned up against a wall to get his breath. He wasn't very happy. For the first time in three hundred years, he felt insulted.
Module 3 Profiles Three A. Lead the way. Exercise one, page twenty six. Sewing. Writing stories. Skateboarding. Ice skating. Knitting. Collecting stamps. Playing chess. Boxing. Fencing. Football. Painting. Songwriting. Exercise 3B, page 26. American Teens with Drive Some teenagers spend their whole lives playing computer games, watching TV, or just complaining that they are bored. While some others get out there and do things, meet America's new generation of dynamic teens. Akian Kramerick is a girl from a small town in Idaho whose favorite hobby is painting. Akian is very creative and learned how to use pastels when she was six. She pays a lot of attention to detail and her paintings are very realistic. She finished 40 paintings that sold for as much as $25,000. In December 2001, Rainey's leader Thompson, who was a student at Edison Middle School, had to do a science project. Her mother helped her design a game which makes learning math simple as well as fun. Rainey's got an A grade for her project, so her teacher gave it to some younger students to try out. Soon after that, people started to ask for their own copy of the game. So they set up a company called MathWorks LLC. Esteban Cortezar is a young man whose love for fashion began when he was a child in Colombia. He began designing when he was 10. He used to take old clothes apart and then staple pieces back together again. Today, Esteban is in charge of a growing fashion empire. He recently traveled to New York, where he showed his latest collection during Fashion Week. Esteban is determined to succeed. And it looks like he is going the right way about it. Chase Austin competed in his first race at the age of eight in a go-kart pieced together by his father. The 16-year-old certainly loves speed and already has a career which many people could be jealous of. This young man from Kansas is not afraid of hard work, and that's why he has won so many awards. Three B. Who's Who? Exercise 1. Page 28. As promised, today we're talking with students about their favourite storybook characters and those we love to hate. So, Sally, would you like to go first? Sure. Well, I love Dorothy from The Wonderful Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum. She's a cute young girl with lots of freckles and long brown hair that she wears in pigtails. Her enemy is the Wicked Witch. She's old and ugly and she has a horrible thin face. Ugh. Thanks, Sally. How about you, Patrick? You like Bob Cratchit from Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, don't you? Yes, I do. Bob's very poor and he's quite skinny because he can't afford much food. He's in his thirties and he's a nice blonde man, but Scrooge treats him badly. He's a nasty elderly man. He's thin and has a little grey hair, but he's mainly bald. Thanks. Now, over to you, James. Well, I love Peter Pan from the book of the same name by J.M. Barry. 
He's such a happy character, with a smiley face. He's slim, and he has short red hair. Captain Hook is always chasing him. He's a horrible middle-aged man, with dark, curly, shoulder-length hair. He has a dark tan, and a beard, and a scar on his face. Oh, he does sound scary, James. Now, last but not least, we have Mary. My favourite character is Alice from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. She's very slim and pretty, with long, straight blonde hair, and she's a teenager like me. Alice meets some really weird characters on her journey, like the Duchess. She's big and fat, with a huge round face, and she shouts a lot. Thanks, everyone. Well, that's all we have time for today. Don't forget that next week we're going to be talking about our favourites. Exercise three A, page twenty eight. Your school play was exciting, Fiona. Thanks for inviting me. I'm glad you enjoyed it, Clara. Everyone worked hard to stage Alice in Wonderland. Do you want to meet the actors? Yes, I'd love to, but I can't tell who is who. I only remember them in their costumes on stage. Okay, let me help you. Can you see the short boy over there with the spiky blonde hair and freckles? The one with the spiky hair? Yes, that's Robert. He played the part of the White Rabbit. Oh, really? He was very funny. What about the Duchess? Julie was the Duchess. She's the tall, well-built girl with the long, dark hair in the corner. She looked huge in that big costume. And who played the Cheshire Cat? Oh, that was Matt, the boy next to the coffee table, the one with the short brown hair. He's so cute. Come on, I want you to introduce me to him first. Exercise 7, page 29. 1. What has Mr. Geller got? Have you seen the new maths teacher? The one with the scar on his cheek? No, that's Mr. Green, our new geography teacher. So who's the maths teacher? Mr. Geller. The one with the funny beard? It's not a beard, silly. It's a moustache. 2. What is Lucy's hair like? I like your hair, Lucy. Really? My sister says it was nicer when it was straight. No, I think it's better wavy. Me too. Thanks. 3. Where is Anne going? Anne looks lovely. Is she going out? Yes, she's going out with friends. Is she going to the theatre again? No, she wanted to. But there were no tickets left, so she's going to see a film. 3C. Against all odds. Exercise 1. Page 30. The Person I Admire by Jenny Smith. The person that I admire the most is scientist Stephen William Hawking. He was born on the 8th of January, 1942, in Oxford, England. Stephen is famous for his work on the basic laws of the universe. He is also famous for the way he copes with having motor neurone disease, MND. Stephen studied physics at University College, Oxford. He was diagnosed with MND while still at university. Stephen slowly lost control of his muscles and eventually he couldn't walk. Despite this, he finished his studies, got married and started a career at the university. Some years later, he lost his voice completely. Unfortunately, he was in the middle of writing a book at the time, 
and suddenly had no way to communicate other than blinking. Today, a computer system on his wheelchair enables him to speak. Of his many books, A Brief History of Time is Stephen's bestseller. The reason I admire him is because he is very intelligent and brave, and he never gives up on life. When I think of him, I know that anything is possible as long as you really want it and work hard to achieve it. Three D, Culture Corner. Exercise two, page thirty-one. The Yeoman Warders. A trip to London is never complete without a visit to the Tower of London. The site dates back to the eleventh century and is guarded by the Yeoman Warders or Beef Eaters. King Henry VIII first introduced beef eaters in 1485, when he used them as bodyguards. Their duties included looking after the prisoners in the tower and guarding the crown jewels. These days, though, their main role is to act as guides for the many tourists that visit the tower every year. They also take care of the eight big black ravens that live in the tower. There are thirty-six yeoman warders at the tower, and they are all men who were in the armed forces for twenty-two years or more. They live in the tower with their families. The beef eaters are most famous for their striking red and gold uniform, but they actually only wear this on formal occasions. Most of the time, they wear a dark blue uniform with red trimmings. No one is exactly sure where the name beef eater comes from. One theory says that the warders used to be paid with meat instead of money. Others say that the name comes from the French word buffetier. Buffetiers were guards in the palace of French kings. They protected the king's food. English in use three. Exercise two a, page thirty-two. A, what are your dad's hobbies? B, not a lot really. C, no, he is not actually. D, if you say so. E, what does your dad do? F. Yes, it certainly is. Exercise three, page thirty-two. Hi, Peter. Where were you? In my dad's office. I wanted to give him some papers. What does your dad do? He's a lawyer. Mine is a vet. Wow! It must be very rewarding. Yes, it certainly is. Dad loves looking after the animals. He sometimes brings them home for the night. Goodness me! Does he have any time for hobbies? Not a lot, really. He plays golf every weekend, though, if he has the chance. What are your dad's hobbies? He likes playing board games. Board games? They're a bit boring, aren't they? He doesn't seem to think so. He loves sitting by the fire playing chess. If you say so, but I'm not sure if I agree. Exercise five, page thirty-two. Reading rules. E. E, get, a, a, glad, set, sat, bed, bad, 
kettle, cattle, pet, pat. Extensive reading three. Across the curriculum, history. Extensive reading three. Across the curriculum, history. Exercise two, page thirty-three. Children in Victorian times. Victoria was the Queen of England from 1837 to 1901. During early Victorian times, poor children worked from the age of five to feed themselves and their families. These jobs weren't easy and were often dangerous. Many children worked as chimney sweeps because they were small and thin. They climbed up narrow chimneys to clean them. Street children or orphans usually did this job. A lot of children also worked in cotton factories. When the cotton threads broke, children went into the machines to fix them. This was very dangerous. Other children worked in coal mines. They pushed trucks of coal, or they opened and closed doors to let air through tunnels. The masters were often cruel. Children worked long hours for very low wages. A lot of children had health problems and accidents. Lord Shaftesbury helped to stop adults from using young children at work. He started free schools for poor children. By the end of Victorian times, all children went to school until the age of ten. Module Four, in the news. Four A, news stories. Exercise Three B, page thirty six. News Twenty Four, the bare necessities. A woman from Vancouver, Canada, came home from work one day. To find herself in the middle of a real-life nursery rhyme, Paula Green is now called Goldilocks by her friends after finding a hungry bear in her kitchen. The two-year-old brown bear was eating Paula's porridge, so she quickly went into the next room and called for help. Eventually, the baby bear finished his meal and ran off into the forest. Luckily, there was no sign of a daddy or mummy bear. Scorpion in a bunch of grapes. A deadly scorpion found on a kitchen table caused panic for a family in Wales. Michelle Smith, forty-two, thinks the scorpion came into her house inside a bag of grapes she bought at the supermarket. While the rest of the family were hiding. Mrs. Smith's husband bravely caught the beast. Real life lassie saves boy's life. A dog was called a hero after he came to the rescue of his eight-year-old owner, just like in the film Lassie. James Thomas broke his leg when he fell into a river. Realizing he was badly hurt, he called his dog Buddy. Who amazingly pulled him to safety? James was recovering in hospital yesterday, but can't wait to get home and say thank you to Buddy. News text alert: Sport. A player for a Lincolnshire football team broke a record when he scored 16 goals in a match yesterday. I was just playing my best for the team, he said. 4B. Did you hear about? Exercise two A, page thirty eight. Good evening, Mr. Shaw. I'm from the Hong Kong Herald. Can you tell me what happened to you in your taxi today? Well, it was about four o'clock in the afternoon, and I was driving home. 
Go on. When suddenly something flew down from the sky, and hit my car, I was surprised. Wow! What was it? A huge turtle. That's unbelievable. I know. I stopped the car and got out. The turtle was lying on the ground, and two people were running towards it. They looked very worried. Who were the people? The turtle's owners. It seems that the turtle was crawling on the balcony of their tenth-floor apartment when it fell off onto my car. Oh dear, that's terrible. So how was the turtle and your car? Well, the turtle was fine, but my car was badly damaged. How do you feel now, Mr. Shaw? Well, I'm still a bit shocked. I'm not surprised. What a story, Mr. Shaw! Thank you for sharing it with us. Four C, take action. Exercise one A, page forty. A group of students came up with the idea of making a school club to help save the environment. Tanya Brunton, Alicia Morton, Gina Montgomery. Clive Forsyth, Jim O'Sullivan, and Carl Johnson created the Nature Madness Club and won the award for the best student work. At first, their club only had thirty members, but word soon got around that Nature Madness was fun, and less than a month later, they had over three hundred students. Now, they are thinking of asking for the help of students from other schools. Nature Madness members. Took part in lots of after-school activities. They took classes to find out about pollution, recycling, and conservation. The whole team helped to make the classes more interesting by using pictures and videos, and so on. After that, the members organized different events and activities, such as recycling or clean-up days, planting trees, and helping stray animals. The mayor gave each student a gold medal for their good work. Their teacher, Barbara McAlpine, said at the ceremony, "I'm extremely proud of my students. They proved that you don't have to wait until you're grown up to do important things." Exercise three A, page forty. And Rovers fans are celebrating all over the country tonight after their team won the national championship for the third time, beating the Reds three goals to one. And the atmosphere here is amazing. The band hasn't come on stage yet, but you can feel the excitement in the air. Thousands of fans are here, and like me, they're expecting to see a fantastic show. Now the lights are going down. Claudia is wearing a delightful pink summer dress. It's a typical Stefano creation, but it looks like this year's collection is going to be a big success. The audience love it, and the photographers are taking thousands of pictures. Now here's Kate in an elegant two-piece suit. The locals here at New Bay are not happy. Thousands of people have gathered in the town square. Just in front of the mayor's offices to express their anger at the mayor's decision to close down the town swimming pool. 4D, Culture Corner, Exercise Three, Page Forty One. British teenage magazines.
About half of British young people aged 12 to 16 read teenage magazines. Two of the most popular magazines for girls are Sugar and Bliss. They have glossy, colourful covers and include beauty and fashion, celebrity gossip, real life stories, horoscopes, quizzes, and problem pages. Of course, boys don't usually find these magazines very interesting. Instead, they buy music magazines like Enemy or magazines about sport like Shoot or Match. Usually, teenage magazines contain a lot of language that only teenagers use. They might use celeb instead of celebrity, for example, or fave instead of favorite. They also say lads instead of boys, dosh instead of money, and natter instead of talk to your friends. This makes the magazines more attractive to teenagers and easier to understand. On a more serious note, though, a lot of these magazines can help teens find solutions to problems they don't feel comfortable discussing with their parents. That's why the problem pages in these magazines are very popular. In fact, many teens buy them just for the problem page. How about you? What do you like most in magazines? English in Use 4. Exercise 2, page 42. Can't we watch the news? Do you fancy watching it? Oh no, I hate reality shows. Oh no, not that. Well, I suppose so. Do you want to watch that new reality show? Shall we watch that too? Sure, I really like documentaries. Actually, I'd rather watch the other channel. Exercise 3A, page 42. Hey Sam, do you want to watch that new reality show? Oh no, Becky, I hate reality shows. Can't we watch the news? I suppose so. What channel is it on? Channel One. Julie, there's a documentary about dolphins on TV. Do you fancy watching it? Sure, Pete. I really like documentaries. There's a sports program on after. Shall we watch that too? Actually, I'd rather watch Channel One. Why? What's on? EastEnders, my favourite soap opera. Oh no, not that! Exercise six, page forty-two. Reading rules: A, A I, plus R, plus vowel. Air, Mary, Harry, Belly, Harry, Fairy, Mary, Lad, Ferry, Belly, Dairy. Exercise six, page forty-two. Reading rules: A, A I, plus R, plus vowel. Air, Mary, Harry, Belly. Harry, Fairy, Mary, Lad, Fairy, Belly, Dairy. Extensive reading for 
Across the curriculum, media studies, exercise two A, page forty three. Turn on and tune in. Lots of universities in Great Britain have their own radio station. Students who are studying media courses or hope to work in the radio industry usually run the stations. The radio stations entertain the students by playing all the latest music and chart hits. They also review bands, films, and new CDs, among other things. On a more serious note. The radio station informs the students about all the news on campus and in the local area. A radio station needs several people to run smoothly. Firstly, there's a DJ who presents the show and plays the music. There is a journalist who writes and then reads the news. A technician or engineer is always nearby in case the equipment breaks down. Lastly, the producer organizes everything and controls the show. Working for the radio station is good for the students involved; they gain useful practical experience that may help them find a job in the future. If you want to find out more about student radio, go to www.radiofeeds.co.uk/other. You can even listen to the stations online. Exercise four, page forty-three. Good morning, listeners, and welcome to breakfast time with your DJ Alison Cole. We're coming to you live from the studios of Radcliffe University with the news that matters to you. First, here's a quick update on the big basketball game last Friday against Sutton. Your Radcliffe Raiders are going on to the championship. That's right. We knew they could do it. Great job, mates. Now for the local news. Here's our star reporter, Mark Jackson. Thank you, Alison, and good morning to you all. Mr. Baker, our fire service chief, is retiring after 40 years of hard work. There is a special celebration for him on the 4th of June. Make sure you are there. We all wish Mr. Baker a pleasant retirement. Traffic is heavy today in the town centre due to road work in Collins Circle. Be careful. That's it for now, Alison. Back to you. Great, Mark. Thanks for that. Let's get back to the tunes we all know and love. Here's you too with "Where the Streets Have No Name." Module Five: What the Future Holds. Five A: Predictions. Exercise Six, Page Forty Seven. Um, I think the world will be a very different place in two thousand one hundred. I'm sure that robots will do most of the housework for us, so we can spend more time playing and having fun. But I think there won't be many plants and animals left on the planet, so we'll have to find new types of food. I also think the Earth will be very polluted, 
and maybe we'll have to wear masks. What I'm really afraid of is that if we continue to cause pollution, there won't be any clean water left, and we'll have to go to other planets to find water. Five B. Gadget madness. Exercise two B, page forty-eight. Hey, Bridget, where are you going? Hi, Chris. I'm on my way to buy a virtual pet. What are you talking about? What is a virtual pet? Well, my mum says I can't have a real dog, so I am going to get a computerised one. A computerised dog? Yes, Chris. I'm going to buy a puppy. Name it, feed it, and train it. All I have to do is press buttons on the gadget. So when your virtual dog is hungry, you press a button that shows you are feeding it. Exactly. There is a button for walking it as well. It will be like having a real dog. Because you have to take care of it every day. Oh, come off it! It won't be like a real pet because it won't show you any affection. Well, you have a point there. Still, I like the idea. Exercise eight. Page forty-nine. You'll never be alone with the new Vivo Five Hundred Sport MP3 player. This is the MP3 player you've been waiting for. The new Vivo Five Hundred, with its splash-proof player and headphones, means you can take it to the beach. Or the swimming pool this summer, and not worry about water. Its built-in speaker means you can share your music with your friends, and not just a few songs. No, this player can store up to two thousand songs, and all for one hundred and ninety-nine pounds. It's the best in MP3 technology. Small, light, and easy to carry. Get your own Vivo 500 now. For information, call zero eight hundred seven five five eight four four. Five C. What's your opinion? Exercise two, page fifty. Online or in class? Many people believe that there won't be any schools in the future. Instead, students will learn at home with the help of a personal computer and the internet. It is true that technology plays a big part in learning today. In many parts of the world, students use personal computers. To write their school assignments or keep notes of lectures. What's more, students go online to look up useful information or do an online course. However, computers will never be able to replace teachers. Teachers motivate their students, help them out with difficult tasks, answer their questions, and give clear explanations. Moreover, teachers show young children how to behave and act as role models for them. To sum up, technology can help students learn things. Unfortunately, it cannot offer them the inspiration and support that teachers can. Five D. Culture Corner, Exercise One, Page Fifty One. 
High Tech Teens. Teenagers spend a lot of time in their bedrooms, hanging out with their friends. But your average teenager's bedroom has changed a lot in the past few years. Up until recently, teenagers had teddy bears, dolls, sports equipment, tape recorders, board games, and the odd radio in their bedroom. Nowadays, these traditional toys are all but gone, and innovations such as MP3 music players and games consoles are popular instead. A recent survey showed that seven out of ten British teens have a TV in their room, and six out of ten have a games console. More than half the children have a DVD player or a hi-fi system, while around one in three have a digital music player (MP3) or a computer (PC), and 10% of teens have digital TV. So it's not surprising that around a third of the kids have gadgets worth up to two thousand pounds in their rooms. How do they pay for them? Well, nine out of ten of them. Receive these high-tech goods as Christmas or birthday presents, while others save their pocket money or earn the money through working. Some parents might be shocked to find out that their son or daughter could be sleeping on a gold mine. It seems fair to say that as new technology increases, so does the value of kids' bedrooms. English in Use Five, Exercise One B, Page Fifty Two. Can you help me send an email? This is how you can send an email. That was easier than I thought. Now connect to the internet. Make sure you click on Send when you finish writing. Got it. What's next? Sorry, can you say that again? You may also select an email address from your address book. Exercise two, page fifty-two. Mark, do you have a minute? Sure. What do you need? Can you help me send an email? No problem, Kathy. First of all, turn on your computer. All right. Now connect to the internet. Then access your email account. Got it. What's next? Click on Create a message and type it in. Make sure you click on Send when you finish writing. Anything else, Mark? Oh yes. Include the email address of the person you are sending it to. Thanks, Mark. That was easier than I thought. Exercise five, page fifty-two. Reading rules: A plus L M, S K L F. R, half. O plus M, N, V. A. Some. Calm. Come. Harp. Cup. Sun. Love. Mother. Monkey. Extensive reading five. Across the curriculum. I C T. Exercise two A, page fifty three. Simulating reality. Do the name Sim City, The Sims, MS Flight Simulator mean anything to you? Well, they are all popular video games that simulate reality. In Sim City, for example. Players have to build a city that looks and functions much like a real one, with houses, shops, and factories.
However, we don't only use computer simulations for fun. There are many things that we cannot study or test in real life because it would be too difficult or dangerous. Computer simulations make such study and testing possible. In the past, for example, pilot training used to be very dangerous. Nowadays, pilots can practice their skills before they enter the cockpit by using flight simulators. Engineers also use computer simulations to design and test new products before people start using them. They can identify dangerous faults in cars and buildings, for instance, and therefore save lives. With the help of computer simulations, we can develop new things without putting people's lives at risk during real life testing. They not only provide us with entertainment, but also play an important role in our future. Module 6 Having Fun Six A. The fun starts here. Exercise two. Page fifty six. Exercise three, page fifty six. Forget all about your real self and enter the world of fantasy. At Disneyland, Tokyo, go on the Jungle Cruise, explore tiny worlds, go on a water ride at Splash Mountain, and eat a home cooked meal at Grandma Sara's kitchen. Before you return to the real world, make sure you have shaken hands with your favorite cartoon characters. You have explored the haunted mansion and you've come across some ghosts. You have flown with Peter Pan in a pirate ship through the night skies. You have ridden the Toontown roller coaster. You have gone on a rocket journey in a star jet. A world of wonders. Have you ever wished you could travel around the world in minutes? Have you ever dreamt of seeing the world's most famous landmarks all in one place? Then visit Tobu World Square in Japan, the most unusual theme park you've ever seen. See more than 100 tiny models of the world's most famous buildings, bridges, and monuments. Take a stroll around the Taj Mahal, the Colosseum, the Great Wall of China, and London Bridge. When you get tired of sightseeing, enjoy a meal in a restaurant or go souvenir shopping at World Shoppers Mercado 2. Book now, you've never seen anything like it. Six B. Teen camps. Exercise two B. Page fifty eight. Have you planned your summer holiday yet? Of course, I'm leaving next Monday. Where are you going? My parents have booked me a week at Campbell's Adventure Camp. Adventure Camp. What's that all about? It's a teen camp in Redwood National Park. Wow, you're lucky. I've never been to an adventure camp. Well, do you fancy coming with me? If you come, you'll learn how to put up tents, build fires, make tree houses, and survive in the forest. Thanks, but I'm afraid I can't. Why not? Have you already made other plans? No, I haven't. I just don't think my parents will let me. Well, if I talk to them, maybe they'll let you. Really? Thanks, Sam. You're a true friend. You know what they say: 
A friend in need is a friend indeed. Exercise eight, page fifty nine. Hi, Paul. What are you doing? Oh, I'm just filling in the form for teen camp. Good. What class have you chosen? Rafting. I wanted to do rafting, but the class is full, so I've chosen survival skills. Survival skills. That sounds serious. Well, I think I'll learn a lot. How about you, Sally? What have you chosen? You know me. I'm not the outdoor type, so I won't be doing rafting or anything like that. No, I've chosen acting. That's good. I'm sure you'll like it. Do you know what the others have decided to do? Yeah. Let's see. Edward decided to do web design. At first, he wanted to do video game design, but the classes were full too. Edward and his computers. I know he loves them. How about the girls? Well, you know Jenny loves horses, so she has decided to take horse riding lessons. And Lisa's like me; she doesn't like hiking or rafting. She's chosen to take painting classes. It's funny. We've all chosen different things. I know. It will be strange not being together all day. Six C, a whale of a time. Exercise two, page sixty. Hey, Mike. Greetings from California. I am having the time of my life. I've been at Camp Pacific for a week now, and I have done millions of exciting things. So far, I've met a lot of interesting people, and I've made some new friends. Together, we've gone sailing, wave riding, and water skiing. The beaches are fantastic, so we've spent some time sunbathing too. We have visited Legoland, the famous theme park, and we've been on some hair-raising rides. We haven't done any souvenir shopping yet, but there's plenty of time for that. I've taken a lot of beautiful pictures to show you when I get back. See you in two weeks. Take care. Love, Janet. Six D, Culture Corner, Exercise Two, Page Sixty One. Legoland, California. There can't be many people around the world who haven't heard of Lego. These colourful plastic bricks have been a children's favourite for many years. You can build just about anything with Lego bricks: cars, houses, castles, spaceships. And a trip to Legoland, California, will show you that anything is possible with Lego. Among the attractions at Legoland, California, is Dino's Island, where you can dig for dinosaur bones and fossils, or take a ride on the Coastosaurus roller coaster. Or why not visit Fun Town, where young visitors can drive a fire truck, fly a plane, and get an official Legoland driving license? Everyone's favourite is Knight's Kingdom, where you can ride the fantastic dragon coaster through the castle and find out what life was like in the past. At Explore Village, you can go on an African safari trek and see giraffes, zebras, lions, and other animals made out of Lego. Before you leave Legoland, California. Be sure not to miss Miniland USA. Twenty million Lego bricks form amazing models of American landmarks, such as the Statue of Liberty and the Kennedy Space Center. This is certainly one of the most spectacular sights at Legoland, California, and will make your visit here unforgettable. English in Use Six, Exercise One, Page Sixty Two.
How can I help you? I'd like to reserve a place at your camp. What's your name? And when would you like to come? Are there any specific classes you're interested in taking? I'm afraid there aren't any places left in photography. You need to send a deposit in order to reserve your place. Can I have your email address? Looking forward to seeing you in July. Exercise 2, page 62. Good morning, Kia Camp. How can I help you? Oh, hello. I'd like to reserve a place at your art and drama summer camp, please. What's your name? It's Mark Brown. And when would you like to come? From the 1st to the 16th of July, please. OK, that's fine. Are there any specific classes that you are interested in taking? Yes, I would like to do painting and photography. I'm afraid there aren't any places left in photography. OK, then how about sculpture? That's fine. I've made the booking. You need to send a deposit in order to reserve your place. Can I have your email address so I can send you details of our bank account? Of course. It's mark at coolmail.com. Thanks, Mark. Looking forward to seeing you in July. Thanks a lot. Bye. Exercise 5, page 62. Reading rules. U, I, plus R, U, P, third, O, O A, plus R, O, nor, O, burn, born. Bird, board. Extensive reading six. Across the curriculum. Physical education. Exercise 3A, page 63. When it comes to sporting activities, Swimming in the pool can be great exercise, but also very dangerous. This simple guide will show and explain the rules you need to follow in and around water. Safe splashing. 1. Do not play or run around the pool. The surface is wet and you might slip. 2. You probably know how to swim, but some people don't. Do not push anyone in, because you can put them in danger. 3. You shouldn't eat before swimming, because it can lead to stomach cramps and a risk of drowning. 4. Make sure you know where the lifeguards are, and call them if you get into trouble. They are there to save lives, so always do what they say. 5. Always pay attention to the no diving signs around the pool. Only dive in designated areas. 6. Never jump in like this. Dive bombing can be a lot of fun, but it can also put other swimmers in a lot of danger. 7. All pools have rules displayed on signs around the pool. Always read them before you start swimming. They are there to make sure you stay safe. Enjoy splashing!
Module 7 In the Spotlight Seven A, Walk of Fame, Exercise Two C, Page Sixty Six. Moving on to the last round now. It's well-known stars. Have your fingers on the buzzers and let's go. Who are we talking about? You have seen her face on the cover of a million magazines. Some say she's one of the most beautiful women in the world. She was born in Germany in nineteen seventy. And has one of the longest careers in fashion. Is it A. Avril Lavigne, B. Cameron Diaz, or C. Claudia Schiffer? Yes, Alan. It's Claudia Schiffer. That's right, the wonderful Claudia Schiffer. That puts you in the lead again, Alan. Come on, guys, you'll have to be quicker on the buzzers. He's one of the most handsome men in film. This blonde-haired, blue-eyed boy is from England. You may know him from his roles in *The Aviator* and *Cold Mountain*. Is it A. Jude Law, B. Bruce Willis, or C. Brad Pitt? Jude Law. Yes, it is, Sandra, and that's two points for you. The clock is ticking, so let's move on. He's one of Russia's most successful athletes. He started skating when he was four. One of his greatest achievements so far was winning Olympic gold in 2006. It is A. Evgeny Plushenko, B. Mikhail Baryshnikov, or C. Alexei Smirnin. Evgeny Plushenko. You are fast, Alan. And yes, you're right. That really does put you ahead now. Danny, you're a bit behind. You'll have to be quicker. Okay, everybody ready? He's most certainly funnier than your average guy. He's a comedian, actor, and director. If the films Meet the Parents and Zoolander are in your DVD collection, you'll know who we are talking about. Is it A. Ben Stiller, B. Tom Cruise, or C. Adam Sandler? Yes, Danny. Is it Adam Sandler? Oh no! I'm sorry, Danny. It's Ben Stiller. Great film too. Not to worry, Danny. Now it's almost time, but we have time for another question. He is one of Russia's most talented performers. He won the BBC Singer of the World competition in 1989, and since then his career just keeps getting better and better. Ready? Is it? A. Luciano Pavarotti, B. Julio Iglesias, or C. Dmitri Hvolstovsky. Dmitri Hvolstovsky, definitely. Yes, it is, and just in time too. And we have a winner. Congratulations, Alan. And next up tonight. Exercise six, page sixty-seven. Famous Russian figure skaters. Two of the most famous female skaters in Russia are Irina Sruskaya and Ekaterina Gordieva. Both of these women have competed for years in different events and have won many championships around the world. Irina Sruskaya was born in 1979 and began skating at the age of four. She quickly became a champion in women's singles skating. She has won a record seven European titles and two world titles so far. As people say, Slutskaya is the most talented jumper of all the female athletes in the world. She was the first woman to land a triple triple jump in competition. Ekaterina Gordieva is probably the most loved female skater in Russia. Born in 1971, she also began skating at the age of four. Gordieva was not as successful as a single skater and became a pairs team with Sergei Grinko. They won two Olympic gold medals and four world championships. Sadly, her career in pairs skating ended 
when her partner and husband Grinkov died from a heart attack at the age of 28. Seven B, DVD frenzy. Exercise three A, page sixty-eight. Hey, Adam! I found a great film for us. About time. We've been here for hours. Which one? Mrs. Doubtfire with Robin Williams. That's the funniest movie ever. But I saw it last weekend. Sorry. Oh no! Any other suggestions then? Hmm. Let's see. How about The Sixth Sense? It's the creepiest thriller of all time, according to the critics. I don't like thrillers. I'd prefer something with more action. Well, do you fancy a fantasy film, like Lord of the Rings? They say it's got the most stunning action scenes ever. Okay, that sounds good. Seven C. In the charts. Exercise one, page seventy. One. Two. Every morning, every night, we pray to God, protect the world today. Bless the children, keep them safe, for the innocence and love of truth must not be dissuaded. Three. This is how I live my life. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. 7D, Culture Corner. Exercise 2B, page 71. The national sport of England. Football is the most popular sport in England. In fact, a lot of English people say it is their national sport. English people have played football for a very long time. However, 
The game didn't have any real rules until the 19th century. In 1815, Eton College created rules to make the game less violent, and later in 1848, Cambridge University made many of the modern rules. Football quickly became as popular as other games, such as cricket. Today, there are thousands of football clubs in England, and professional clubs such as Arsenal, Liverpool, and Manchester United are famous all over the world. Football has become part of the cultural life in England, and hundreds of thousands of fans support their favourite teams in stadiums around the country every weekend. Many English children have football lessons at school, and famous footballers such as David Beckham and Michael Owen have become role models for a lot of these children. English in Use Seven, Exercise One A, Page Seventy Two. Next, please. Two tickets for King Kong at six p.m., please. I'm afraid it's sold out. Two tickets for nine p.m. Then, please. Is that for the seven p.m. or the ten p.m. showing? That's twelve pounds altogether. Then. Is there a discount for students? Here are your tickets and your change. Enjoy the movie. Exercise one B, page seventy-two. Next, please. One adult and one child for Harry Potter, please. Is that for the seven p.m. or the ten p.m. showing? Seven p.m., please. That's twelve pounds altogether. Then. Here you are. Thank you. Here are your tickets and your change. Thanks. Two tickets for King Kong at six p.m., please. I'm afraid it's sold out. Oh, right. We still have tickets for the nine p.m. and the eleven thirty p.m. showing. Oh, okay. Two tickets for nine p.m. then, please. That's fourteen pounds, please. Is there a discount for students? Yes. Tickets are five pounds for students. Okay, here you are. Thank you. Enjoy the movie. Exercise four, page seventy-two. Reading rules. O, O A, O. Tone. Boat. Burn, bone, fur, foam. Extensive reading seven. Across the curriculum. Music. Exercise one a, page seventy three. One. Exercise three, page seventy-three.
Does this sound familiar? Your grandparents may remember the old silent Charlie Chaplin comedy films. If so, they'll probably tell you that without the music that accompanied them, these films wouldn't be much fun. Later, when films began to have sound, the music stayed because directors use pieces of music and sound to create particular moods and feelings. We call these musical cliches. In horror films and thrillers, for example, loud sounds let you know when something frightening is going to happen. Violin tunes accompany emotional scenes in romantic films, and in adventure films, we use sharp and fast sounds for action scenes. Some musical cliches introduce specific places. Shots of Hong Kong, for example, often have xylophone music in the background, while shots of Paris come with melodies played on the accordion. There are many musical cliches for a number of types of scenes. So next time you watch a film, pay attention to the music in the background. You'll be surprised how many musical cliches you can spot. Module 8 Green Issues Eight A Save the Earth Exercise two B page seventy six Acid Rain One The Problem The Problem starts here Cars burn petrol, factories and power stations burn coal and emit toxic fumes. So the air that we breathe becomes polluted. 2. Air pollution and acid rain. This pollution is gathered in clouds, and with the oxygen and water in the atmosphere, it becomes acid. The winds carry the polluted clouds across long distances far away. When it rains, this pollution lands on trees, houses, buildings, cars, clothes, everywhere. This is called acid rain. But there is actually acid fog, snow, and sleet in the same way. 3. Water and soil pollution. When acid rain falls into lakes, streams, rivers, and seas, they become toxic. This is water pollution, and it harms, kills, or wipes out fish and plant species. When acid rain flows through the soil, it poisons trees and plants. Acid rain also causes serious damage to important buildings and objects. 4. Good news. The good news is that governments have been trying to reduce the air pollution that causes acid rain. Some industries have been using new technologies for some time to help make factory smoke less harmful to the environment. But we need to do more. We can help reduce the amount of acid rain by using our cars less, or by using solar power to heat our homes. Exercise 5, page 77. 1.
five. Eight B, eco helpers. Exercise three A, page seventy eight. Hi Tim, what's up? Oh, hi Dave. What are you doing here? Oh, I've joined the Eco Helpers Club. Oh yeah, I've heard about that. Sally collects rubbish for recycling in the park every Saturday morning, doesn't she? That's right. She's been doing that for a month. I've been building nesting boxes. Nesting boxes? Well, there aren't many trees left in the city for birds to build their nests. If we don't help them, they will have to leave the city. That's interesting. What else have you been doing? We've been planting trees and cleaning out ponds for a week now that the weather's good. Your club sounds wonderful. I could join as well, couldn't I? Of course you could. We really need volunteers, but you have to see Miss Jackson first. She'll tell you what to do. Sounds great. I'll join first thing Monday morning. Exercises seven A and B, page seventy nine. One, she isn't here, is she? Two, they're late, aren't they? Three, he arrived yesterday, didn't he? Four, she is sleeping, isn't she? Five, we can't go, can we? Six, she hasn't left, has she? Eight C, born free. Exercise three A, page eighty. We all like going to the zoo, but what about the animals? How do they feel? Should we keep animals in zoos, or is it wrong to take them out of their natural habitat? On the one hand, zoos play an important role in nature conservation. Many natural habitats are in danger. By keeping endangered species in zoos, we make sure that they survive. In addition, a good zoo can be very educational, as it teaches us how animals behave. And how they act in their habitat. This way, we learn how to protect them. On the other hand, there are certain drawbacks to keeping animals in zoos. Zoos cannot recreate an animal's natural habitat, and animals can be very unhappy in cages. It would be more useful to spend money on protecting habitats rather than zoos. Furthermore, there are a lot of good documentaries about animals. So zoos are not really necessary for education. To sum up, there are strong arguments both for and against zoos. Nowadays, most zoos do their best to protect animals. However, I believe that animals should live in as natural an environment as possible, and we must do our best to protect them and their habitats. Eight D, Culture Corner, Exercise One, Page Eighty One. Scotland's Natural World. Experience the amazing sights and sounds of Scotland's natural world.
Scotland's national nature reserves (NNRs) are magical places, open for everyone to visit and enjoy. They protect spectacular wildlife and landscapes, including many rare species and habitats. Here are just a few of Scotland's 71 beautiful reserves. Saint Kilda. The Saint Kilda Islands are in the most remote part of Britain, 66 kilometers west of Scotland's Outer Hebrides. Saint Kilda has the highest cliffs in Britain, over one million seabirds, including puffins, and unique species of sheep and field mice. Saint Kilda is also one of the best places in Britain for diving because of its clear waters and amazing underwater caves and tunnels. Best time to visit: May to July. Loch Lomond. Loch Lomond is a beautiful lake in the west of Scotland. It's famous for its fantastic wildlife and woods. Come in the spring, and you'll see the woods full of bluebells and wild garlic. You may even see some deer or a rare golden eagle. Best time to visit: spring. Inch marshes. The Inch marshes are in the north of Scotland, and are one of the most important wetlands in Europe. Hundreds of birds come here to nest in spring. When the marshes flood in winter, you'll see flocks of swans and geese. Don't miss the fantastic bird-watching hikes and nature trails here. Best time to visit: November to June. English in Use Eight, Exercise One, Page Eighty Two. How can I help? I'm interested in making a donation. A monthly donation, please. Would you like to become a member? How much does it cost? How can I pay? Could I take your name and address, please? Exercise one, page eighty-two. Hello, WWF. How can I help you? Hi,、uh, I'm interested in making a donation. That's great. Do you want to make a one-off donation, or would you prefer to make a regular monthly one? A monthly donation, please. Let's say twenty-five pounds per month. That's very generous. You know that includes free membership, don't you? Oh, really? And what are the benefits of membership? You get our magazine every three months and regular posts about our campaigns. Good. That's great. How can I pay? Let me give you our bank account details. It's Barclays Bank, account number three nine five eight two nine. Five seven eight three one. Could I take your name and address, please? Certainly. My name's Matt Russell, and I live at thirty-four Scarsdale Road, Bromley, Kent. Thank you very much, Mr. Russell. You'll receive the latest issue of the WWF magazine and a welcome pack soon. Thanks a lot. Goodbye. Exercise five. Page eighty-two. Reading rules. Y, I E, I, I, shy, die, time. I R E, ire, tire. My, mine, tied, tired, pie, fire, why, hire. Extensive reading eight. Across the curriculum, science, exercise three, page eighty three. 
the food chain. What's a producer? All energy originally comes from the sun. Green plants can't hunt or shop for food, so they simply use sunlight and water to make it. Green plants usually start food chains. They are called producers. What's a consumer? Animals such as grasshoppers get their energy from eating green plants like leaves. As they only eat plants, they are called herbivores. Carnivores, like lions or some birds, only eat meat. Omnivores eat plants and animals. Anything that eats another plant or animal to get energy is called a consumer. What's a decomposer? The food chain ends with dead animals that fungi and bacteria use as food. These organisms break down the complex organic compounds. Which then return to the soil so that plants can use them again. That's how the food chain starts all over again. Why is the food chain important? The food chain provides the energy that all living things need in order to survive. If there is a break in the link in the chain, then all organisms above this link are in danger of extinction. Imagine the world without plants. How would animals survive? Module nine, shopping time. Nine B. Can I help you? Exercise three A, page eighty-eight. Have you finished packing for camp? Not yet. You've been packing all morning. Do you need any help? Yes, please. I'm sure I've forgotten something. Have you packed your swimming trunks and towel? Oh bother! I forgot to pack my towel. And did you buy sunscreen? Yes, I put it in with my shampoo. Have you put in your toothbrush and that tube of toothpaste I gave you? Actually, no. Here's forty pounds for snacks, and remember to buy a phone card when you get there. Sure. Thanks, Dad. Exercise six, page eighty nine. Hi, Marie. Sorry, I'm late. I've been all over town looking for a present for my mum, as it's Mother's Day tomorrow. Yeah, I know. I got mine this morning. What did you get her? I got her a recipe book. She loves cooking, so I think she'll like it. Anyway, the bookshop is right next to her work, so she can exchange it if she likes. What about you? I got her a lovely blouse from Lucy's boutique on Marshall Street, and my brother Andy got her a pair of sandals for the beach. They're really nice. Sandals? That's a good idea. I hadn't thought of that, and I passed the shoe shop three times. Don't worry. I'm sure she'll like the recipe book. What did Natalie get your mum? She got her a bracelet. That must have been expensive. I don't think so. She got it from the jewellers on our street. He makes everything himself, so he is cheaper. And your stepsister? Sara got her her favourite movie from the video shop. I think mine is the worst. Oh, stop worrying. It's a lovely present. Plus, it's the thought that counts. <laughs> Exercise seven A, page eighty nine. Hello, 
I'd like a phone card, please. Sure. What type? Local, please. Here you are. How much is it, please? Twelve pounds. Sorry, how much did you say? Twelve pounds. Here you are. Thank you. Nine C, gifts for everyone. Exercise three A, page ninety. Hi, Wendy. Greetings from New York. It's great here. I've been shopping all day and I'm really tired, but at least I have finished buying presents now. It's so difficult to find something for everyone. The easiest person to buy for was my little brother Tim. I bought him a silver robot. He'll love it. It walks, talks, and does tricks. I had more trouble finding something for my dad, though. He seems to have everything already. In the end, I bought him a brown leather wallet. His old one is falling apart. My mum likes everything I buy for her, so I got her a lovely silver picture frame. I've also found some striped cushions for my grandma. I hope she will like them. I've bought a present for you too. I won't say what it is though, as that would ruin the surprise. See you in a few weeks, Angela. English in Use Nine. Exercise One A, page ninety-two. This is for you. That's very kind of you. Try it on and see if it fits. What do you think? It matches the colour of your eyes. I hope you like it. Are they your size? They're too big. You can exchange them. Thanks. Exercise one B, page ninety-two. Here's my present. I hope you like it. Fantastic! I've always wanted trainers like these, and they go with my new tracksuit. I'm glad you like them. Are they your size? Oh no, they're too big. That's all right. You can exchange them. Thanks. Don't mention it. This is for you. That's very kind of you. What is it? Open it and see. Wow, it's a lovely anorak. Try it on and see if it fits. Okay, hang on a sec. There, it's just my size. What do you think? It really suits you. It matches the colour of your eyes. Really? Thank you very much. Exercise four, page ninety-two. Reading rules. C between vowels. S nice. S between vowels. Z busy. Face. Phase. Police. Please. Dice. Raisin. Extensive reading nine. Exercise two, page ninety-three. Choices, you make them.
People shop a lot. We buy clothes, food, music, mobile phones, and millions of other things for what seems like a million different reasons. Obviously, we buy things because we need them, but sometimes it's just to fit in. Sometimes we buy stuff, and we just don't know why. Everything we buy affects the environment, but some choices are better than others. We have the power to make those choices. We can buy smart. Take some time to think before you buy something. Maybe you don't really need it. Send a virtual e-card instead of a paper birthday card. Buy things that will last a long time, such as rechargeable batteries. Share with friends. Maybe you and your friends like the same video games. Why don't you share or swap your games instead of buying one each? Buy recycled. Fewer natural resources are used to produce recycled items, which helps the environment. Read the labels and choose recycled. In 2002, 90% of teenagers reported buying a product for a good cause. What have you been doing since? Module ten: Healthy body, healthy mind. Ten A: Stress-free. Exercise one, page ninety-six. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Exercise three B, page ninety six. Take it easy. I don't have enough time to talk with my friends, watch TV, or simply sit around and do nothing. I'm always studying, practicing the guitar, or doing sports. Help! Time management is the answer. Make a weekly planner and separate the have tos from the want tos. Allow some want tos in your daily timetable. My brother and I are always fighting about silly things, and I always get the blame, while Sam gets away with everything. What should I do? If you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. You can't always have it your way. Learn to cooperate. A new girl has come to our school. She's pretty, and all my mates say she's a snob. They're spreading all kinds of rumors about her, and no one will talk to her now. I think that's unfair. How can I help her? People like to gossip. Most of the time, it is harmless. 
but it can also be hurtful. Break the chain. Don't spread gossip. Just say to your mates that you are not interested in mean gossip. Don't believe everything you hear. Introduce yourself. Talk to her and form your own opinion. Ten B, accident prone. Exercise two A, page ninety eight. Hey, Bill! Look at me! Look out for! Ah! That lamppost! Too late. Are you all right? Ah, oh, I think I've twisted my ankle. It really hurts. Don't worry. I'll call for an ambulance. In the meantime, let me wrap your ankle with my scarf. Hmm. You've hurt yourself quite badly, young man. Your ankle might be broken, you know. Bad luck, Matt. I'm sure you'll be fine soon. Let's just call it a summer break. Exercise three B, page ninety nine. Why did the boy throw the butter out of the window? He wanted to see a butterfly. Butterfly. Which day of the week do fish hate? Friday. Fry day. Exercise seven a, page ninety nine. Hello, Kate. It's me. Could you do me a favour? What kind of favour, Mum? A colleague fell down and broke her arm, and I need you to phone the florists and have them send her some flowers in hospital. Oh, sure. You mean Anne's flower shop down the road? Yes, you'll find her number in the telephone book. Tell Anne we want a nice bouquet for the occasion, around ten to fifteen pounds. I'll pay her tomorrow morning if that's okay with her. Okay. And which hospital does she send the flowers to? Saint Patrick's Hospital, room number. Hang on, I've got it written down somewhere. Ah, yes, eighteen B, and the name is Connolly, C O N N E L Y. C O N N E L Y. Okay. Ask Anne to write a card to go with the flowers. Just ask her to write. Hope you feel better soon. Fine. Oh, and Kate. Tell Anne that they should be at the hospital before visiting hours are over, and that's at half past seven. Before seven thirty p.m. Okay, Mum. I'll phone her now. Anything else? No, I'm running late, so have supper without me, and don't forget to look. Ten the... C, Doctor Doctor. Exercise one B, page one hundred. Dear Wornout, it seems that you are exhausted. Here are a few things you can try in order to feel better and be able to take part in the tournament. First of all, it's important to get some rest. Why don't you take a couple of days off training? This way, you'll give yourself the chance to relax. You should also think about your eating habits. Eat more fruit and vegetables. And drink plenty of water. If you do this, you'll give your body the vitamins and energy it needs to perform well. 
I hope my advice helps. Good luck in the tournament. 10D, Culture Corner, Exercise One, Page One Hundred and One. RFDSA. Imagine a job that involves helping two hundred thousand isolated patients over seven point five million square miles of the Australian outback. The job includes treating patients on remote sheep farms, operating with basic equipment. It also means dealing with the risks of flying in bad weather conditions and making emergency landings to save critically ill patients. This is the daily life of those working for the Royal Flying Doctor Service of Australia. Living in the outback means almost complete isolation for thousands of Australians. It's unusual to find homes or small villages within 60 miles of each other, let alone a hospital. The RFDSA, which is a non-profit charity, was set up in 1928. Since then, it has been helping those who live in remote areas of Australia. Today, it offers primary health care from an aeroplane, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, as well as educational assistance. If the doctors are unable to treat a patient, they will fly them to the nearest hospital. To be treated there. To learn more about the RFDSA, visit www.flyingdoctor.net/default. English in Use Ten, Exercise One A, Page One Hundred and Two. Hello, Mrs. Thompson. What's the matter? I don't feel well. It hurts when I swallow. Let's take your temperature, shall we? How long will I feel like this? Bless you. Here's a tissue. Exercise one B, page one hundred and two. Hello, Mrs. Thompson. Hi, Anne. Oh dear, what's the matter? I don't feel well. Have a seat and tell me what's wrong. I've got a headache. I feel dizzy and my throat sore. It hurts when I swallow. I see. Let's take your temperature, shall we? Okay. Hmm. You have a fever, Anne. That means you're coming down with the flu. It isn't serious, so don't worry. Plus, you can go home early. Can I go to basketball practice tomorrow? I'm afraid not. You should get plenty of rest, have warm baths, and drink lots of water. How long will I feel like this? You'll feel better in a couple of days. <coughs> Bless you. Here's a tissue. Exercise four, page one hundred and two. Reading rules. O W, O U, ow. Bow. Loud. U. O. A. Mum. Done. Bud. Town. Noun. Done. Foul. Ton. Nun. Down. Extensive reading ten, across the curriculum, literature, exercise two B, page one hundred and three. Daniel Defoe, sixteen sixty to seventeen thirty one, an English novelist and journalist, is most famous as the author of Robinson Crusoe. 1719, a story of a man shipwrecked alone on an island. Among his other works are Moll Flanders, 1722, a journal of the plague year, 1722, and Captain Jack, 
His last great work of fiction, Roxana, appeared in 1724. Defoe went into politics and trade and traveled all over Europe. In 1684, he married Mary Tuffley. They had two sons and five daughters. June 28. When I woke up after sleeping for almost two days, I felt quite refreshed. So I got up and decided to prepare myself for the night ahead. The first thing I did was to fill a large bottle with water and put it on the table next to my bed. Then I grilled some of the meat on the coals, but I only ate a little bit. I walked about but was still very weak and I felt miserable about my sickness. At night I had three of the turtle's eggs, which I roasted in the ashes for supper. After supper I tried to walk, but I felt so weak that I could hardly carry the gun. I never went out without that. So I walked a short distance and sat down on the ground, looking out to the smooth and calm sea in front of me. As I sat here, I thought about my life so far. Not feeling sleepy, I decided to go back to my hut and make some medicine from green leaves and rum. I took some and went to bed. I must have been sleeping all the next day, and the day after, because when I woke up I felt refreshed, lively and cheerful. And when I got up, I was stronger than I was the day before, and I knew my stomach was better because I felt hungry. Song, Modules 1 and 2, Exercise 1, Page SS1. You what you want where you can live in style You what you want where you can live in style But everyone is different We all have different ways Different thoughts of what to do And where to spend our days So find the place where you belong The place that makes you smile The place that gives you what you want Where you can live in style Song Modules 3 and 4 Exercise 1, page SS1. The future's yours, just look and see. Be anything you want to be. Just remember who you are. A trailblazer and a star against some lots you still can win. Don't give up. Don't give in, put your talents to the test Make your mark and be the best No matter what you want to do You can make your 
dreams come true Be determined, take control And you can achieve your goal Against all odds, you still can win Don't give up and don't give in Put your talents to the test Make your mark and be the best Against all odds, you still can win Don't give up and don't give in Put your talents to the test Make your mark and be the best Song Modules 5 and 6 Exercise 1 Page SS2 Song, Modules 7 and 8, Exercise 1, Page SS2 Song, Modules 9 and 10, Exercise 1, page SS3. When I'm under the weather, or when I'm feeling ill, there's one thing that works for me, much more than any pill. are the best medicine you take away my pain whenever i am saddled do you make me smile again you are the best medicine 
medicine you take away my pain Whenever I am sad or blue you make me smile again I don't need tea or syrup And tablets just won't do The only cure for my disease Is spending time with you Medicine, you take away my pain Whenever I am sad or blue You make me smile again You are the best Medicine, you take away my pain Whenever I am sad or blue You make me smile again The doctors can't explain why My symptoms disappear and I'm in perfect health again Whenever you are near You are the best medicine You take away my pain Whenever I am sad or blue You make me smile again You are the best medicine You take away my pain Whenever I am sad or blue You make me smile again